Hello, this is Sarah Brash. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to do um, another video about this latest Living While Black race hoax that was perpetrated by the Yale Law School Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and Belonging, don't forget about Belonging, um, administrators, uh, bloated new vast malice DEI bureaucracy named after me by Yale President Peter Salovey. Of course, I was cited as the impetus for this vast new Maoist uh, DEI bureaucracy on Yale's campus for snitching on other students and faculty uh, for alleged racial harassment. So anyway, as I said in my last video, I talked about this latest debacle at Yale Law School, this latest Living While Black Race hoax, perpetrated by the Yale Law School DEI administrators and the victim of this uh, Living While Black race hoax at, in, at Yale Law School is a Native American Yale Law School student named Trent Colbert. So I mentioned that. So now there's a number of videos that I wanna make about this and I wanna make each of them relatively short. This first one I want to make is about Richard Painter. So I've already made a YouTube video. I will probably make more. I made a bunch of blog posts with a bunch of screenshots of Richard Painter has been terrorizing me for over a month now. He is the former White House ethics lawyer, if you can believe it, with more with uh, like a hundred, like seven hundred and fifty thousand. Twitter followers. So he's just been incessantly um, abusing and harassing me for over a month now, terrorizing me, trying to drive me to suicide. And uh, he started doing this because he was using me as a proxy to attack University of Chicago philosophy and law professor Brian Leiter because Brian Leiter stood by my side throughout the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale. Um, so he was attacking Brian Leiter and he was just using me as a proxy to attack Brian Leiter. He had found out on Brian Leiter's blogs that Brian Leiter has stood by my side throughout the Nappy Mall Black hate crime hoax at Yale. So he started attacking me uh, as a way to attack Brian Leiter. And then one of the things that he started terrorizing me for, for over a month now, is I mentioned, um, I was I was speaking with someone else on my Twitter thread, and I I mentioned how several months ago now um, there was that free speech debacle at Stanford Law, Law School, uh, where that involved student members of the Federalist Society, and I questioned whether Slate, in particular, uh, this journalist at Slate, I using the term journalist loosely there, uh, at Slate named uh, Mike, Michael Joseph Stern, I believe. Am I saying that correctly? And then um, the Above the Law blog. So basically, they tried to ruin these... It, it w There's much more to the story, but I don't want this video to get too long. So the nutshell version, what's particularly important here is that I mentioned to someone else on my Twitter thread that um, that that Mark Joseph Stern, Slate, the Above the Law blog, were trying to ruin the future career proce prospects and they doxed these Federalist Society student members at Stanford Law and tried to destroy them, ruin their careers, doxed them. Um, tried to subject them to cancel culture and trial by Twitter without due process for no, a non-crime. And so I basically was suggesting that this was something of a hoax, that a living, not a, not a living while black hoax, but a hoax um, that was perpetrated by Slate, uh, Mark Joseph Stern, Mark Joseph Stern, uh, and, uh, the Above the Law blog to ruin these Federal Society student members at Stanford Law. So um, Richard Painter being, you know, just 
a complete liar. He's just a complete liar. And he grabbed a hold of this. No one was talking about him. No one was accusing him of anything. No one was mentioning him. I was having a conversation with one of my Twitter followers and wonderful and beautiful supporters on my Twitter feed, on my Twitter feed. And so Richard Painter started attacking me for that, saying that I was, I had accused him, saying that I had accused Richard Painter of being involved in a conspiracy with Stanford Law School and Slave and Mark Joseph Stern and Above the Law blog to ruin the careers, to destroy the careers of some student members at Stanford Law of the Federalist Society. No one had done this. No one mentioned, no one was talking about Richard Painter. No one accused him of anything. Certainly no one accused him of being in any conspiracy. And he just kept saying over and over and over and over again that I had accused him of being in a conspiracy with the fake news press to destroy federal society student members at U.S. law schools. So that's, he just kept saying that over and over and over and over again. It's a completely, complete lie, a uh, disgusting lie. No one, no one did that. That didn't happen. So it was so terribly, terribly interesting to me when this debacle at Yale Law School happened recently and Richard Painter, I was quite surprised. I didn't think he would show his underbelly like this to me. Uh, he's just started saying that this was ridiculous, ludicrous, that the Yale Law School administrators had done this, um, that they had, you know, said that the Federalist Society was triggering to the Black Law Students Association and to Black Law Students at Yale Law School, that just the mere membership in the Federalist Society was a reason to accuse someone of racism. So so Richard Peter actually said, like, this is ridiculous that these Yale Law School administrators are doing this to this Native American law school student um, over this silly email that was a party invite. And that they're saying that, that because he's a member of the Federalist Society, that he is, you know, that that in and of itself is, is um, constitutes racism and cre being a member of the Federalist Society constitutes creating a hostile environment to black and brown students at Yale Law School. And so Richard Painter said, this is ridiculous that the Yale Law School administration did this. We have real issues of racism in the world. And why are they, you know, attacking this student over a party invite, over a silly email? This is ludicrous. And so I said, wow, um, you know, I'm so shocked because, you know, Richard Painter has been terrorizing me for over a month for exactly what he's condemning the Yale Law School DEI administration for doing to this student. I, Richard Painter has been terrorizing me for over a month now, in no small part because I suggested that that happened at Stanford Law. That I suggested that that happened at Stanford Law. And so then it was so, it was, it was so amusing to me so Richard Painter, I think, realized that he just stuck his foot in his mouth, just stepped in it royally, and he, like, then all of a sudden backtracked, and again he started attacking me for accusing him of, of being part of conspiracy with the fake news press and U.S. law schools to destroy the Federalist Society. And it it's just, he really needs to, you know, the, the cognitive dissonance is strong with this one. He really needs to get his story straight because uh, he made himself look a right fool. So, yeah, I, I don't understand why Jack and Twitter and Twitter safety and Twitter support are allowing a public figure with 750,000 Twitter followers to terrorize a tiny account on Twitter. Like, it's... It's ludicrous, it's asinine, it's ridiculous that, that they're allowing this to happen. And, um, and as I've documented in my blog posts and I documented in another YouTube video, Richard Painter 
uh, has been inciting mobs against me. Uh, it's been a very trying, um, it's been a very trying last month or last two months, last three months, really. It's been rough. Um, and I don't think it's going to get better anytime soon. And I know I just have to remind myself that the reason why I'm being attacked as I am right now is because we, me and you beautiful people and all my beautiful supporters, we are getting the truth out about the witch hunt at Yale. And I know and we're, we are going to reestablish due process and equal protection at Yale and Yale Law School and everywhere. And we are going to end cancel culture and trial by Twitter without due process. And I know that I just have to see this as an opportunity. Um, and I have to stay strong and calm and brave. But it's hard. It is hard. And I would not be able to do it without all of you beautiful people. And I love you so much. Your kind words, your support. Your donations mean the absolute world to me. So please like, comment, share, subscribe. I will have all of my fundraising links below. My amazing attorneys at Randazza just filed a bunch more appeal documents against Yale. So I'm going to try to uh, get out a couple more shorter videos tonight. I think the next one I'll do will be about Yale Law School professor Monica Bell and the Justice Collaboratory and then I'm trying to do one more about um, Yale Law School Dean, specifically about Yale Law School Dean Heather Gerken. Okay, have a great night everybody. I love you so much. Take care.